In this video, we will show you how to implement the whole pre-sale and whitelist process of your NFT project with Candy Machine V2. My name is OneStone from Stractors and I will show you a step-by-step -step guide on this topic in the next minutes. First of all, thank you for your support on the last videos. We got over 100 likes, new subscribers and Discord members. If you want to support us once again on this video, please leave a like, subscribe to our channel and post a comment. Also join our Discord to become a member of our community. We now have many Candy Machine experts on board who are available to answer any question you may have. So now, let's start with our guide. Ok, to achieve whitelist functionality we need several steps. The first step we need is to generate SPL tokens in general. Therefore, Zolana has a pretty pretty nice documentation. Here are all the steps listed you have to do, but we will show them in the video too. You can find the link in the description. And the next step we will do is the distribution of the SPL tokens. Instead of just sending them manually to wallets, we will use Gumdrop for this. Gumdrop is a native part of Metaplex, so you don't have to install something new and it comes with lots of functionality, for example distributing them with SMS, email or Discord bots. Also it has a basic UI, which is safe and let you manage the process easily. So check this documentation out if you want to use it. The next step is to bring up the candy machine. Therefore, we will obviously use Candy Machine V2. If you don't know how to use it, make sure to check out our previous video on this topic. In general, the main functionality is handled by the complete Metaplex repo. You should check this repo out here and then, because they are always developing. A good example for this is the commit which came up 12 hours ago. They deleted the fair launch UI and exchanged it with a new Candy Machine UI based on FLP. Normally, they implemented the whitelist functionality as you can see in the commit name, but for any reason it was not working for me, so I will show it with the Candy Machine V2 responsive UI. This is developed by Bloodspill. He is a member of our Discord, Candy Expert and a part of our team. If you have any questions to the repo, just join our Discord over the link on our website or in the description and get in touch with him. This repo is based on Exiled Apes, so maybe more easy for you to implement in your page if you started with Candy Machine V1. The frontend can handle Candy Machine V2 whitelist functionality and brings with it some basic design, so it's definitely worth checking. Make sure to check out Bloodspill's Twitter account too, he has a project named Gatsby Club, so worth keeping an eye on this guy. But now, we should start the official whitelist process. The first thing we need or we have to do is creating SPL tokens. Before starting with the actual comments, maybe I should tell you that I already cloned and installed Candy Machine V2 UI and Metaplex, so you have to do the steps manually on your own. But now let's start with generating some keys. First I go into my V2 directory and now I type in Solana Keygen grind and starts with se double dot one. The reason why I'm doing this that way is that when, when we are generating the keys uh, as vanity key pairs with grind and two special letters at the beginning of the public key, it's more easy to use them from the command line. Because instead of copying everything from here and there, I just type se tab and everything is working. Now I'm generating the buyer wallet and giving it an airdrop of 2sol2. And now I'm generating the whitelist wallet. The reason why I have a buyer and a whitelist wallet is to have one wallet or one key pair which is like the guy who who uh, is minting on public mint and a whitelist wallet for the guy who have SPL tokens and is is meant to to mint uh, at the at the presale. So now I'm giving uh, the whitelist wallet a Solana. I gave the whitelist wallet a Solana airdrop two, and now I'm generating a token key pair. So that's the key pair we will later on generate uh, our SPL tokens from. So now as you can see I have a buyer wallet, a seller wallet, a token wallet and a whitelist wallet and that's enough. So 
What I'm now doing is setting the seller wallet as the key pair in my config file. If you are not doing this, you will have problems later on. So I clearly recommend setting this. And now we can start to generate our SPL tokens. For this I type SPL token or first have a misclick. I type SPL token, create token. And then our key pair, our token key pair, dash dash decimals zero. Decimal zero is to ensure that you have one token and not like small parts of tokens. Now I have to create a SPL token account from the key pair. So I type SPL token create account and then the key pair.json. And now I'm typing SPL token mint key pair and in the end the number of SPL tokens I want to mint in my wallet. To make sure everything worked, I can just type SPL token accounts and we are seeing that the key pair has a balance of 5. So everything worked fine. Yeah, now I recommend uh, yeah, putting your buyer, seller and whitelist wallet into, into phantom wallets to make sure like you can manage everything easily, but I will skip this process for now. As you can see now, we have buyer, seller and whitelist wallet in our phantom wallet extension. What we are now doing is typing TS node or misclick again, <laughs> typing TS node and uh, checking out our gumdrop seal I, so our gumdrop CLI directory and type in create dash dash help to see what comments do we have or what flags and attrib attributes do we have and uh, what do we have to fill. So first we obviously have to fill this key pair and, and the rest is irrelevant for a DevNet test. On claim integration we should use transfer because yeah like a candy we could we could use to mint SPL tokens from candy machine but that's not what we are doing now. And then we have transfer mint where we are yeah exactly typing in our token public key. Then we have distribution method where we can as I told before use email, SMS, uh, Discord or something but for our test today we will use the wallets attribute which is basically a list of wallets with the matching links for, for the front end. And in the end we have distribution list. This one we have to generate now. Um, that's basically the place where the wallets and the amount of SPL tokens are based. So for this reason we are generating a text file. I named it this list dot json not dot txt. Yeah, now we are opening this um, to get the parts who are inside. We can go to the gumdrop documentation to the whitelist part and we see like the, the input we need. As we only have one whitelist wallet, we can, we can delete like the, the comma. And yeah, addition is also not relevant for us. What is relevant for us is the amount. So we minted five SPL tokens before, so we can use uh, for amount five. And now we need the whitelist public key in, in handle. So the one who mints the SPL token, his public key is entered there. So now as we finish the distribution list, we can start generating our create. So first we will input key pair and therefore our seller wallet. Then we will use claim integration with a transfer as told before. Then we have transfer mint where we put our token public key without .json. So not the file, just the public key. Then we will add distribution method. Therefore, as told before, we use the wallets method. Yeah, and then we have our attribute distribution list, which I named this list.json. And now if we type return, then it should work fine. And as we can see, it generates our gum drop perfectly. This can take some seconds, so 
don't mind about that. And now it's finished. So now we have a .log folder in our v2 folder where we have a file named devnet urls and some some hash in the end. Here is the file which you would normally like just paste into your discord where everyone can find their wallet and their link, copy it and paste it into Chrome. So now to show you that it's not possible for other wallets to mint, I connected my buyer wallet, which is not the handle. And as you can see, it's a unveiled claim. So um, yeah, it's not possible for others to take the links of, of different wallets. That's why it's okay to, to just put the list into your Discord. So now we have to change to DevNet and to connect our whitelist wallet again. Therefore I refresh the page because yeah, without refresh it's not correctly working. And yeah, now I can claim uh, my, my five tokens. As you can see, this costs like a small fee amount. And now the claim is succeeded. And as you can see in my wallet, we have no unknown token. Um, yeah, when you click on it, you can see that there are five tokens. Yeah, now let's uh, let's continue. Um, what is the next the next important step is to prepare our candy machine, and therefore we will edit the config JSON. Yeah, as you can see, I have price and number already pre-populated. For the whitelist mint, you can use the capture logic, so we set gatekeeper to null, but it's not necessary at all because you can only mint if you have an SBL token, so yeah, it's not relevant for bots. Yeah, then we need our sold treasury, which is our seller wallet public key. Then we have SPL token account and SPL token, which is only relevant if you mint your SPL tokens from a candy machine. But yeah, we use transfer as method, so that's irrelevant for, for now. Yeah, then we have our go live date, which I just set into the future. So yeah, because it's not public mint time, it's whitelist time. Yeah, then we have our whitelist mint settings where it's getting interesting um, therefore for burn every time i set to true because i want that one spl token can mint one nft then in mint we have our token public key exactly in yeah the pre-sale attribute we have we have set to true because we want to achieve a pre-sale and furthermore we have set the discount price to 0, 0 0.5 because we want to test if the functionality is working too to have a small discount for whitelist members. The rest is irrelevant for us. For DevNet tests we use storage Arweave. For mainnet we would use something like Arweave Sol. If you like want to see how to configure the whitelist settings for your needs there's a part whitelist settings in the metaplex docs where you have like several different yeah possibilities so now that we have finished our config file what we can do now is yeah creating our canning machine as shown in the before video 2 in this video I have lots of misclicks, <laughs> sorry sorry for that, but what we are doing now is typing ts node and then the directory to our candy machine v2 CLI. Yeah, then upload our key pair, like the seller wallet. Then we will have dash configuration path where our config.json will stay. Yeah, and then we have our assets, which is just the folder assets in the same directory. And yeah, now this can take a while. So um, as you can see, the candy machine is generating. I will skip this part and have a small cut here. So yeah, see you in some seconds. So, uh, as our candy machine is ready now, now we come to the front end part. Normally, we would use the newly implemented candy machine UI part from Metaplex, but for any reason, it's not working for me. So, I'm using the repository of uh, Bloodspill, the candy machine, candy machine 
v2 responsive ui repository because it's working fine for me and i can do everything as expected so yeah we are now going into the repository of candy machine v2 and preparing our .n file the only thing we have to edit here is uh, putting our candy machine public key in there exactly and Yeah, now we can enter the, the repository. Normally you would yarn install. As you can see, I already have everything installed. So what I'm doing now is yarn start to open the UI on localhost. As I told before, the repository has lots of different functionalities. So um, yeah, don't wonder too that there are some, some node structures NFTs inside because it's the repo of of our candy expert and if you want to like make your own page out of it you should take this as basis and then edit everything as you as you want so it's completely open source so you can yeah do whatever you want with this page Yeah, and uh, keep in mind uh, on my on my second user, um, which I'm using here, localhost is al always opened on an edge, which doesn't make sense because we need our phantom wallet and our phantom extension, which which I have in Chrome. Yeah, now I want to test it with the buyer wallet, um, to see okay, uh, can can he mint without SPL tokens? As we can see, the the sign says pre sale is live and. Here we don't have the ability to mint. The only thing that is there is a countdown to the to the go live date. When I'm changing to to whitelist wallet now and uh, refreshing the page, connecting my wallet, then we can see you are whitelisted and can mint five times. Total minted, like how many NFTs remain, and we have the ability to mint with the mint button. Yeah, I also have some salts on my wallet and here you can see okay it's the reduced mint price 0.5 sol and we are using one token to mint one nft now the mint is complete and successful uh, we can see like one token is minted with this nice bar we have here like we only have four tokens left so one token was used for the mint and we have our Stractors NFT, the beautiful Rosla White here. Yeah, so everything is working as expected. From now on, you can change the design of the UI or anything as you would host your site anywhere. But this is the basic functionality for a whitelist mint site. Now, let me thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. Um, if you have any questions, join our Discord and ask them there to Bloodspill or me. The links for everything are in the documentation as usual. So, I'm one stone and see you.